Brando's fashion we're recording right now. So, <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. What's my name? I haven't been on one of these in a while. My name is Jeff. I am joined by uh, two people that uh, whoever watches this channel, if there's anybody left, um, <laughs> will probably know, I would assume. Uh, Cassidy, no offense, Ferdy, but you're probably the most famous. <laughs> because oh. you, most likely. <laughs> because that one you, video wasn't hit. Sorry, say that again. That one video wasn't hit. Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, Cassie, you have your own podcast. Um, uh, there's a catalog that people can check. It's the Information Addict, right? Uh huh. Yep. And for then now. Uh, <laughs> for now. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Freddie, um, your claim to fame is. You've been on a very long conversation with me on this same channel. <laughs> yeah. Where uh, I I don't know if I've told anybody this before, or at least I don't know if I've shared this out on YouTube, but I had just finished watching uh, either some, I know I had watched a documentary or I'd also watched like the Tom Hanks movie on Mr. Rogers where it talked about how Mr. Rogers would just like kind of use silence to try and let conversations go where they needed to go. So I was actually trying to practice that in our, <laughs> our <laughs> conversation, Verity. So we were just kind of both sitting there staring at each other, <laughs> not saying anything. I think probably, you probably talked even more than I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but that's because Ferdy's a man of like silence. Mm. He'll, he'll say something and just, no need for added words. And I'm like, can you expand, please? <laughs> we need to ask. Well, if anybody is uh, interested in seeing that uh, on full display, you can look at the back catalog, catalog of the Randos United channel. I can't remember what we what we called that uh, conversation, but it's out there somewhere. If you dig around enough, you'll be able to find it. Probably already like two years ago. Yeah, something like that. So yeah, but that's not why we're here. Yeah, longer probably three. That was a little bit of uh, background, but um, I guess uh, what I'm most interested in and what, you know, I want to let anybody who's interested in watching this, the two or three people who might watch this know, is, uh, let's see, you two, um, I mean, it's really about how you two met and uh, where that led to. So um, I guess one of the places that I would like to start is with the Bridges of Meaning Discord server, which I think all three of us were pretty much there from the beginning, right? From when it first launched, pretty close. Um, mm -hmm. I know that a few select people were kind of brought on as kind of uh, initial testers of it. Um, and then Paul Vanderclay, uh, shared the fact that it had been created on his channel one day and then shared a link. And that's when a lot of uh, the first, you know, early adopters started joining. And um, Faraday, I think I remember you being there from the beginning, like from the moment people started joining, I, th I think I remember seeing you in there. Um, and very early on, Job uh, started doing an audio only. He was, I think he was just doing a conversation in one of the channels. No. Um, inside of the Discord server. It wasn't even being recorded, but it was kind of a precursor to his, I won't say short-lived podcast, but it's one that, you know, hasn't been very active where he just, it was just called Bridges of Meaning. Um, and uh, he would just talk to anybody who wanted to kind of share their story that either maybe couldn't get a slot on Paul's channel or else didn't feel comfortable going out on YouTube, but kind of felt a little more comfortable with audio only. Uh, and a podcast going out. And some of the early folks on there were, you know, people who probably won't even be recognized, anyone who's on the Bridges of Meaning server these days, like Andreas, um, Ferdy, you were one of the early ones. Um, uh, Runaway, Runaway Rascal, is that the name that uh, yeah, Caleb that. goes by? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those those were a few of the early folks. And, and Ferdy, I, I know you were on there and I really wanted to revisit mine and your conversation because there's so much about your story that I've already forgotten. So anyway, the, the point to all that is 
you guys were both early and Cassidy, I, you know, your story is out there too. Um, and kind of how you ended up on the Bridges of Meaning server and people can go back and, and find that if they really want to. But I think what I'm most interested in is because I remember, I remember those early days when people were first jumping in, you know, I was working at a job and uh, most of the activity was like right smack in the middle of my work hours. And so I had Discord pulled up on one screen and the way that I was set up in my office was like traffic would always just like pass right behind me. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, I wonder if anybody's going to wonder <laughs> you know, what I'm doing on here. But I also wanted to keep up with all the conversations and what was going on and, and meeting and talking to all of the people who, you know, had either been on Paul's channel uh, or people who had been in the comments and just kind of meeting and learning about those folks. And so um, that was just really an exciting time. And mm -hmm. so the, the place where I want to get to is if, if anybody still doesn't know what's going on, um, I'm just going to announce for you guys that Freddie and Cassidy got married recently. <laughs> and unless there is something that I am completely oblivious to, the place where you guys met was on the Bridges of Meaning Discord server, correct? Yes. Now, you are not the only couple to have formed from meeting on the Bridges of Meaning Discord server. I happen to know of you and two others for a fact, but um, there's probably more than that. Um, either that are known <laughs> to others and just not me or just completely unknown. Um, I know, yeah, I know four. Okay. Two, two of which have gotten married and one that I'm not certain about. Okay. But there might be more. I don't know. Yeah, there might be more. Um, yeah, and I only know about three of those. I know about the two that got married, one of which we're talking to right now, um, <laughs> or I'm talking to right now. <laughs> and uh, I think what I'm most interested in is first and foremost, if you guys could kind of both tell from, from your perspective, and whoever wants to go first, that's fine. But just when you first noticed the other one, and then, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just kind of interested in that stuff. Like, I, I'll start with you, Cassidy. Um, like, when did you first notice Faraday? And when do you remember you first interacting with him and kind of what that was like, what the, what the tone of that conversation was? Maybe not necessarily like in direct messages, but just the first time in, in general chat. And if there's anything that stood out to you. Yeah, so, I mean, the first time I noticed Faraday, I, I can't say that for sure, but I'd known he had been around for a long time. Like I had known of him, but we hadn't really interacted much. Um, and uh, so it was probably, is it two years into the Discord before we, or no, probably a year into the Discord mm -hmm. before we had um, first like interactions where I could remember, oh yeah, I remember talking to him there. Um, although I do remember <laughs> um, back in the summer before we like started a friendship, um, we did the video for Voth of like, um, mm, yes, sort of a tribute because he had died. He's one of the members who had died on the server. And so um, I was in charge of taking all those videos and editing it together to kind of make this tribute. And so I had all these people. <laughs> sending me videos and when I saw Faraday's video the first thing I went was like oh my gosh Faraday's so attractive I did not I, I did not expect that <laughs> that was that I wasn't like oh I was pining after him but it was just like oh good for you Faraday good, you're good looking and then <laughs> I moved on and that was that um but we started becoming friends maybe six months later and honestly it was because um it was like after the Friday Q&A things would happen and mm -hmm. he was always in the chats late night with bill uh ginger bill and i knew ginger bill really well but i didn't know Faraday. so i went in to kind of oh talk to ginger bill and during that time it was more normal hours for me to be on <laughs> mm -hmm. and so we the three of us kind of would get into conversations and that happened for a couple of weeks and then there was uh one evening it was the day before halloween um 20 20? Yeah, 2020. Yeah. And um, it was one of those after Q&A things. I had been in the conversation um, for a couple hours and then I left to go to a little like trunk or treat thing with my family. And when I came back, 
Verity and Bill were still in the chat. And I was like, what are you guys doing in there? So I went back to kind of scold <laughs> them for being up still and kind of kept talking with them. And um, Bill eventually left, but there was still other people in the chat, but we just stayed in the open chat and um, we just kept talking. And um, he talked all the way till the morning. For me, I went to bed at a late hour, but reasonable. It's like, for me anyways, I have a night owl, so it's like 1 a.m. or whatever. But um, yeah, for a while, we just were alone in the chat, just talking back and forth. And it wasn't anything, like it's very just plutonic, but um, it was just a good flow. And I think for me, that one was like, oh no, <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> um, I had some... Well, there was like a lot of reasons. I always say Faraday for me was a list of never, ever again. <laughs> you know, no online, no distance, no people undecided about what religion they're a part of. And so it's like, oh my gosh, I'm attracted to this guy, but I think that's a very bad idea. Um, but, you know, it was that little bug that was in my head. Um, so that's where I first met him. And there's more to how it progressed from that, but I'll... I don't know, I'll let you kind of answer the question. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to interrupt for just a second, Ferdinand. Yeah. I don't want to mess up what you were going to say, but what I'm also interested in, you know, so Cassie, you talked about the first time that you actually noticed uh -huh. Ferdy and, you know, you knew he had been around and, and everything, but it was like, you know, when that video compilation was put together, you put a face with a name. So, you know, I, I remember uh, uh, Cassidy, like the first time I knew who you were, it was before I had even talked to Paul because I was just watching Paul's channel, right? And um, and then, you know, uh, so that was the first time I was aware of who you were and that was before there was a Bridges of Meaning server. So I'm curious, Faraday, was the first time that you noticed or knew who Cassidy was on Bridges of Meaning or had you been watching Paul's channel? I, I, I watched Paul's channel, so I knew her from that. And I still remember the video it was because he was talking about like the Jordan Peterson was like a cult thing. <laughs> That's a little harsh. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, that was the first time and I was like, so judgmental. And then, you know. <laughs> and nothing's video. changed about how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to be judgmental. I was trying to be funny, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so that was the first time I, I knew of her. So then I like always like when she was like on the Discord, like I knew the person from the videos. And that always like was with a few, like with you, Luke, uh, you know, a couple others, like you already knew them from the videos, which right. makes it easier to talk to in some ways. Mm -hmm. Probably weirder for the other way around. Like yeah. you, you don't know pe the people, but they know you in a way. But yeah, so that was the first glimpse that I got of her, really. And then eventually on the Discord, like, well, the, the Voth video, of course, like that was one of the things, but otherwise not that much. I think also with the time zones itself. And, so that, so that night, really. and you guys are in the Netherlands, just for everyone. You're fair to you're you're from the Netherlands and Cassidy, you're from the United States, like uh, I am. But yeah. uh, you're from Arizona, right? Yeah. 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 yeah but we yeah so you had we both sort of kind of started having a friendship at the same time and I don't know what it was about our schedules or whatever but all of a sudden and I think probably we just became more active as COVID kind of yeah COVID was probably a big factor as well so you didn't answer the question though well, when did you right. first notice me well, that was on Paul's channel for the video. But I think he's asking more than just like, oh, <laughs> there, there she is. I when, know. when did you first notice that you were interested in Cassidy? <laughs> was it the video? <laughs> no, the, 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 well, the first time that I thought she looked cute was that night and she was getting this pumpkin shirt on for the trunk or treat. And she was showing it off. And I was like, oh, that was probably the first time I thought she was cute. And then before that, he didn't even recognize I was a woman. He was just like, oh, she's <laughs> a thing. Yeah. 
but my brain doesn't work that well by like noticing if I'm into somebody in a way. So for me, it really only started once he asked me for like a private conversation. And I was like, suddenly like, wait, did I say something in the last few weeks you wants to elaborate on? Because you talk about all, all sort of topics. Or is this like a sort of like romantic sort of conversation that's going to happen? And I was like, oh, I don't know. But that's the moment my motor started like running like, from, wait, what? And how should I act? Like what, what I'm doing? Like, um, yeah, well, and I think I recognize, I think we both had some sort of attraction then because like, I don't think we would have stayed that long chatting with each other if there wasn't something. I just recognized it faster. I am <laughs> and, a practice of ginger bill, so that's yeah. what that's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you defeated ginger bill, Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although he's, he's still, right. uh, he, <laughs> he still lingers behind, I know uh, that. You got to stay on your toes. <laughs> yeah. If there's anybody to worry about, it's Ginger Bill. He thinks better than I do. It's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I think for me, after that first conversation, it was sort of that week of like, okay, I recognize what's going on, but I don't, I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> that was my mindset. I don't want anything to do with that. But there was like still that thing in my mind of like, well, it's there and I couldn't sort of shake it. And my birthday was like a week later. And um, I had mentioned it for some reason in a stream because I had to like leave and he gave me a birthday gift. I was like, you don't know me that well to give me a birthday gift. <laughs> like, it doesn't mean that he likes me, but like, it's at least a piece of evidence I can hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's when, after that happened, I ended up in a, like public chat but it was just the ladies of the discord it was sally joe andrea sherry and myself and they started talking about like attraction on the internet and like you know whatever and like being in discord with a lot of guys <laughs> and so then i was like okay guys i think fairly likes me and like he's very cute i kind of like him but that can't happen i can't do that and just going on and on about how like no 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 and I finish my monologue and Sherry goes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and so that sort of planted, I think, another seed of like, you know, well, yeah, why am I being so like negative about this? So for me, it was like, okay, I just need to like, and I had thought a lot about like settling down at that point because I had done a lot of like, um, being single for a long time and building my career for a long time was sort of like, I think I'm ready for something different. I don't want to stop doing the things that I did before necessarily, but like, I, I think I do want to get married. I think it's important for me to get married um, more than just wanting to get married. And like, I had to take that seriously, but I knew that I couldn't do that where I was if I didn't like clear the deck of whatever this weird thing was. And I didn't want to wait around three, six months trying to like have this friendship and like figure out what it was. I'm like, I'm just going to ask him for a private conversation. I'm going to have it out and we can just like move on or we can, you know, figure out <laughs> what it is. So I just asked him for a conversation and that, um, I think that's when he started thinking about it more. He probably didn't recognize whether he <laughs> liked me or not, but he got a sense of um, it in like a higher level and just like, oh, we're having conversations on the internet in a platonic way. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> Freddie, I don't know if you have anything else to say to that, but I'll ask a question if you don't. <laughs> well, you know, that, that was the moment like it started turning more like consciously. And then, you know, I'm just terrible at those things. Like I've been on dates without knowing they were dates. <laughs> Multiple. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> you know, so it's like from like, and then you're like, at that point, you're just more like thinking like from, well, it's probably nothing. It's probably nothing. It's probably nothing. Well, yeah. You know, and then you go into the conversation and then you first have like a little bit of like small talk and you're like, oh when's the question coming right there's got to be a question for this conversation 
And I was like, oh. okay, but no, you have to tell <laughs> what you did. <laughs> so I did, I was not explicit that this was a date. I just went like, oh, I'm going to have a conversation. I was very like loose about it because I didn't want to like be, you know, but I was going to be direct when it came down to it. It's like, listen, this I'm feeling, I don't know if you're feeling the same. Let's have a conversation. Um, but we were doing, he was streaming The Chosen every week on Discord. So we would watch it and then we would talk about it. And there was like a group that would come. Me and, me and Andrea. Yeah. <laughs> come and I came, start coming and other people. So, but yeah, sometimes it was just you and Andrea with your popcorn. <laughs> Andrea, not Andrea. Um, <laughs> and so we decided that, <laughs> we decided to have our conversation after the chosen stream was like done. So we watch a stream and we're sitting and we're talking with the group for a while and we're just letting it go. And so um, as it's sort of wrapping up, he goes, okay, guys, I got to go. I have a date. <laughs> and they're like, okay, bye. And I'm like sitting here like, um, <laughs> I know that I'm having a conversation with you. So he must think it's a date, right? He still claims that he did not think it was a date. He was just, you know, he, that's just something you say. <laughs> like, like it's a bit the trickster in me and a little bit of coaching, like what it might be. Like. Mm -hmm. That's a bold move though. If I was just like, oh no, I want to talk to you about, um, I, I don't know, uh, the Trinity or whatever, you know. <laughs> it would have been fine. <laughs> <laughs> But you don't think that far when you do a trick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so that was sort of the leading up to the conversation. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, a little bit of small talk and then the question came. Oof. What was the question? Was it just what you were saying, Cassidy, that, hey, here's what's going on with me? No, well, because it was like, oh, I got a date. I was kind of like, okay, we're on the same page here. So I kind of just asked him, so how are you feeling about us, like, talking? And he got my drift. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, can we always mean one thing anyway? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and that led to, like, a long conversation, kind of talking, like, really practically about, like, you know what that means and sort of the fears and the the objectives and um during that time in the discord there was a lot of talk about marriage and the point of marriage and you know whatever and you and ginger bill were talking a lot about it too it's like um sort of it like yeah we were planning <laughs> well that's funny too before um either of us were interested in each other um, Ginger Bill, I think, asked me like something about my perspective on kids and like because he said a lot of his female friends are so anti kids and anti marriage and whatever. And I had said some things to the effect of like, well, I think I would be more open and like eager to the idea of having kids if I found the right person. Like if I found a person I, I trusted to have kids with. And Faraday goes, well, Cassidy, there's the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> um and he was totally joking and i'm like no never never <laughs> <laughs> jokes on me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um but no and then he because i mean i think for i think for both of us there was like some uncertainty and for me there was a lot of uncertainty because i was at the point where i had uh, stopped calling myself a protestant um but was, and was looking into orthodoxy and was pretty sure I was going to convert, but I wasn't a catechumen or anything. And I was really wrestling with the idea of what that means for myself, like in the frame of marriage, because it it really, it, the way that I saw it, it really narrowed me. And like, I couldn't just marry <laughs> anybody I wanted. It's like, well, I, I probably have to marry somebody orthodox, the very least Christian. And he was at the place where he was like a theist, but and really interested in Christianity, particularly the Orthodox expression of Christianity, but wasn't sold on the idea of Jesus, didn't be believe in him in like the the fuller sense of like what it would mean to call himself a Christian. And so it's like, well, to enter this thing, like there's this path where it's like, well, we can't feel confident in moving towards marriage. Like 
we can try our best to see if our paths align there, but there's like a really like dividing fence that makes it hard to build a life together if nothing changes. And so that was like, that was a lot to think about. <laughs> But harder for me than you in some ways. Yeah, I didn't have that border, you know. Yeah. Like for me, that didn't need to exist in, in a sense. So that made it for me, like, like especially in the beginning, I guess, like I didn't notice that border at all. And then eventually later down the line, you know, the, the conversation pops up and then it's like, okay, what are we going to do with this? And then it becomes like a real thing. But before that, for me, it was like, like not it, an issue yeah not at all but i think you recognize why it was more um necessary for me like in your situation it wasn't as necessary but me being in that place where i was moving and narrowing mm -hmm. i think you recognize like well yeah like it wasn't like that's ridiculous but yeah but we Do had you know? a couple oh, oh go sorry ahead. go ahead I was just going to ask if you knew or if if there's uh, how, how did you come to resolve? You were probably going there with this, but how did you reach a point uh, where you felt, you know, good about that, Cassidy? Well, we we had a couple conversations kind of back and forth before we officially like decided to jump in and, um, you know, <laughs> be in a relationship and, you know, just ask some questions. And I think I think ultimately it was sort of a gut decision in, in so many ways where it was like um, on paper, Faraday should have been an immediate no. What? <laughs> I, I shouldn't. <laughs> like he's a great person, a great guy, but like for myself and my situations, like everything that I had been taught before, the way that I had been taught to pursue relationships, the way that the sort of the evangelical Protestant ah that would lead to successful marriage, it would have been better to like walk away. Yet there was something in me that was like, you know, whether it leads to marriage or not, I think you do need to be a part of this relationship. I think you need to do it wisely, but like there was all of these things that um, he presented that I had seen before and I had seen the negative side of that story. And like the spirit in which he had and the way that he operated, it like flipped things on its head where it was like all of a sudden him not, you know, being decided on religion wasn't as much of a problem because there wasn't so much of a, uh, um, what's the word, like a complacency or an antagonism against it. It was like just an earnestness, which for me was very helpful because I had almost gotten married when I was younger, I had been engaged and it broke off for a lot of reasons. But after that broke off, I kept moving in my faith and my ex walked away from it. And so that was this terrifying thing of like, wow, like if we had gotten married, I don't think we would have gotten divorced, but I think that shift in him would have happened. And now I'm stuck in a marriage where, you know, I had this one thing that we said we built the whole relationship on and like he's left it. Um, and that was like terrifying to me. <laughs> and it was hard too, because I was the one at the break of our relationship, I was the one doubting my faith and he was very solid in it. And so when that split happened, it was like, wow, I don't even know how to trust when people say they believe in God anymore. <laughs> and so there became this sort of pattern where someone was honest in their you know, skepticism or honest in their, um, you know, uncertainty of a faith tradition. I was like, well, at least they're being honest. At least, you know, there's something on there. And um, yeah, I said it quite often when we were dating, but um, I, I still believe it to be true that at the time when we first started dating, I, I think we were believing in the same God. Mm. We just had different concepts like conceptual confidence <laughs> in it, but we were pursuing the same like larger thing. And I just had this trust that, well, if we move in the steps where we can, which a relationship for me at that time was a step that I felt that I could enter, but it, it wasn't the promise that 
I could enter a marriage. And so it's like, well, there's only so much I can go down this path with you, but I'm willing to take that step and see if maybe we can learn from each other in this like pursuit of what feels like the same thing. And um, yeah, that's why I ultimately took the leap. Um, but yeah, I've had its ups and downs, <laughs> especially with my family. It was really hard to explain. Okay, so I'm dating a guy. I met him on the internet. He lives in the Netherlands. Oh, and he's not a Christian. <laughs> So like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, you you hit on a lot of the questions that I had, uh, Cassidy. So yeah, I was I was interested in in your answer. Uh, whenever you had mentioned like your ex fiance and you know the foundation of the relationship and how you felt like you know one of you was on that foundation and the other one wasn't, that was my question about you and and you and Faraday's relationship and what you felt like that foundation was. And it seems like that was part of the resolution is just like, wow, you know, we're not, we're not saying the same words or saying the same thing about this foundation, but it seems, it seems like to you, Cassidy, the intuition was that you were meaning the same thing. Yeah, well, in a lot of ways, we would say the same things or we'd find agreement in these things. Yeah, I had more of a confidence in Jesus and my commitment to him. And he was like, well, Jesus is really great. You see, he seems really high on the top of the mountain, but I don't know if he's the top top. And I'm not I, I, yeah. I don't think it's responsible for me to put my allegiance to him without without thinking clearly about what that means and, and being sure about it. Mm -hmm. And it became even more crucial when we started dating because he didn't want to be the guy who said he was a Christian so that he could marry me. <laughs> and I didn't want him to be that. And I didn't want to be the girl who pestered him about his faith to get him to be a Christian so that I could marry him. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I like really respected the fact that he was like moving through that earnestly and like wrestling through that. And I don't think the idea of Jesus and the Christian concept is an easy one to swallow. Like I'm, I'm not that kind of person where it's like, well, it's obvious. It's obvious to me now, um, you know, but even, even when I was a Christian, there were times where it wasn't so, wasn't so obvious yet. There was a, a trust in the thing that came. And so, um, yeah. And like, I, I look at my past relationship and my ex and I, I think, well, I don't think he was lying to me when he said he was a Christian and he's a Christian again now. Um, and so like, it's like, I don't think he was lying to me. I don't think it was like a, a, a deception, but I think there was something about that. Um, when your world gets shook, <laughs> um, it reveals kind of the roots mm -hmm. and yeah, for whatever reason, like my roots kept me on the path and his took him away for a while. And, you know, I don't, I don't know the <laughs> particularities of that journey or fully where he is now, but that's where it's like, um, I guess I got that fear of like, even a guy who, um, cause I, I went to even out or like evangelical churches for a long time before I became Orthodox. And, um, there were a lot of great guys who profess their faith, but there was always that fear of like, well, when the, when the storm comes, like, is it, you know, how, how well have you tested that? How well have you kind of shaken that? <laughs> Cause I did a lot of shaking with my faith, like really trying to like not lose it, but, um, Test it. yeah, like weed it, like weed it out. And, um, you know, cause I, I wanted to reject it if it was something worth rejecting. And I didn't come to that position. I came to a position of <laughs> even more, <laughs> uh, religious in a sense. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, there was just something about the spirit in which he pursued, um, the question of religion that was very securing to me, um, but was very hard to explain to those <laughs> around me. <laughs> and so, you, Cassidy, with with your journey, um, moved into the Orthodox Church, right? Um, and 
you two were married in the Orthodox Church. Now, yeah. I, like you, Cassidy, I, I grew up in, you know, conservative evangelicalism. Um, and so I know a lot about what you mean, you know, when you talk about making sure that you're with somebody who is on the same path, you know, the, the biblical speak is equally yoked. Yoked, yep. Yep, very, very uh, big, uh, goes around a lot in, in evangelical singles groups. <laughs> that term gets thrown around <laughs> a lot and, you know, you're, you're told that's what needs to happen. Um, and so I am curious, because I, I don't know a lot about orthodoxy. I only know what I've heard through, you know, the people who have moved from uh, evangelicalism uh, or just, you know, broader Christianity in general into it. Um, most of the people, you know, I know on the Discord who have done that. Um, and so I'm just curious how that fits in with where Faraday was, is Faraday, how like how how does one get married in the Orthodox Church? Because I'm assuming, and maybe I'm wrong, Freddie, but have you converted to Orthodoxy, or or how does all of that work? I guess. <laughs> well, I, I'm I'm catechumen at this point, so okay. I'm not like, like fully He's not a full Ortho bro, but yeah. Ortho bro. Yeah. <laughs> He's working on the beard. <laughs> yeah, well, just to like, <laughs> but no. Uh... I don't know. For me, the, the journey was quite a long time. Like, probably already it happened when we were talking three years ago, right? Like, there was already that sense of searching for something or looking out for something in a way. And uh, I, I guess I mentioned the book Laura's back then as well. Like, I was kind of searching for that magic in the world again, that feeling of like there's like this enchantment everywhere. And like, I guess the moment we started meeting, I was already like on a on a good path upwards in many many fields in my life. You know, I was like getting settled. I was getting a job. I was buying a house. Like everything was like going like in the ways you kind of wanted to go. And and the faith itself, I was just I was just staying curious. Like in the beginning, it was a little bit more global and like in different terms of like stories and myths and and those things. But eventually, Christianity became a bigger part of it. Uh, you know, it's it's already like weird that the one that doesn't that isn't a Christian is streaming the chosen on the Discord in a way. Right. <laughs> so, and then uh, I remember Ginger Bill started like, or like that you started to do the uh, 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 Bible study, like through the whole Bible, even though he never showed up. But. <laughs> Uh, you know, I joined that as well. And then so like you just like you 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 get more involved in the stories. But for me, it was very organic. Like I just kept paying attention to it and weeded out the things that I felt like were not the case to be and let the flower grow till the point that I was like, I'm okay. I can't deny he is at the top in a way. Well, and that, yeah, that was really refreshing for me to see because I came from this sort of like truth first. Christian world where we got to like keep striving and looking for God. And so for me, it's like, I'm like ticking and screaming, moving across the current, trying to like refine what it is to know God. And he's like chilling in the river, letting it take him wherever he wants. <laughs> it's like, there was this sort of like beauty and wonder in it um, that I had lost um, through yeah. deconstruction and like trying to make sense of the world in my head. And I, I had started seeing it come alive again through orthodoxy, um, but like through him, it like even lightened that even more. Well, for me, it was sort of effortless. Like, it's not like you didn't need to put time into it. But is that frustrating, Cassidy? <laughs> no. Like it's so much effort for you, and it's just so <laughs> it's just effortless for him. No, it was like there was something sort of more joyful to it where it like it softened me. It was actually really healing for me. Because it used to be very effortless for me in religion and following God in like pursuit of that. It used to be like um it was all, it was still like a truth first, but it was like a trust. And like, I saw the beauty, I saw the good. And like, I, there wasn't as much skepticism in it. And then I went through the skeptical period, which um, it's very difficult 
um, but I wouldn't take it away. Um, like it was very meaningful to me. It was very helpful to me. Um, but then I kind of hit the end of that when I found orthodoxy and was like, okay, I'm settled. And, you know, I'm starting to see pieces of the wonder again, but there was still sort of that, like, well, I got to figure it out. I got to learn. I got to test. I got to prod. <laughs> um, and then, you know, seeing him and the way that he saw it and the wonder that he had it was like, it, it, it enchanted my world where it started I started seeing the life and the magic in it too and like the beauty of it and so um no I'm, I'm very grateful for it because it it's that reminder for me to like it doesn't it doesn't have to be this hard <laughs> yeah and I don't know why like it like often things are effortless right like you get ripped by something and you pursue it but then after like like for example i did like a lot of the personality tests like years ago like to figure out like what's going on with me in a way like why can't i put myself to something and then you know you you can be maybe interested for a couple months you research it all you learn about it it's very interesting but then you know eventually it loses its its grip and you know it's not really working like working on the long term you might take two or three things out of it that were like useful still to this day but otherwise it's like uh, and that never happened with Christianity like even now still like every time like like in the car to work no, normally I listen to a podcast so that's like two hour drive a day at least that I'm like listening to podcasts around like Christianity and that's not because like I feel like I need to but it's really like I'm curious you're interested yeah and so, so for me, it was always sort of effortless in that way. But then, of course, we got the struggle of like, okay, so what you're going to do? And then it's like suddenly becomes more real, right? Because before, like, you're kind of floating around, you're making some photos here and there, and you're like, oh, ooh, look, that's beautiful. But then suddenly it's like, from, you know, you don't want to pretend it's beautiful for somebody else. But it's very easy to um, mislead yourself in that way like it's very easy to 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 believe to truly believe you're not doing it for somebody else while in the same way you are changing the things you're saying or thinking for somebody else because for me that always like would have felt like you know basically the adam and eve story like i would take the apple and you know i will take a bite from something i should not yet mm -hmm. and then by that i would not only you know curse myself but also curse her and it would probably be the death of, of the relationship that we have because I would be a fake person having a relationship with a real person. And, you know, so there will be no relationship in our. So that was like something to struggle with. At the same time, also, like you would get more ferocious in a way. So you, you put a bit more time in it, you get pushed a little bit more to, you know, take a few steps that you might have withhold off a little bit because you're sort of like afraid or like you know you're not sure you're ready yet like you, you all the excuses you can get really and some of them might have been true like you might need to wait a little bit longer for some things but you know eventually you kind of have to do stuff mm -hmm. well i put a certain pressure on myself too because it you know i was in this weird transition where it's like well i'm think i'm going to become orthodox but I'm still on that place where I, you know, I need to like, I wanted to make sure, <laughs> like, I didn't want to just jump into something um, without thinking it through, without really participating and understanding what that meant. Um, but I knew that as soon as I took the step of becoming a academic human and entering the faith, that really narrowed our relationship even more. Um, and so that was that pressure of like, well, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to put so much pressure on that. And I, I don't want to, uh, well, and a lot of it was like, well, I want to enter with him too. I don't want it to just be me charging along um, and, and making my path and asking him to catch up. Like I wanted to work with someone towards something. And um, there are a thousand entry points. <laughs> And all of them have like something different to show. Yeah. So it's never catching up. Really. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that that sort of dynamic, it almost it almost ended us. Um, mm -hmm. we, we almost broke up um, before we had actually even met in person. 
because there was just that lot of pressure and the, you know, I think for me, it was the spinning of my wheels of how to um, not force something, not <laughs> pressure something, um, but also communicate the seriousness of, of what that means. And like during that time, he said something to me because um, I was really struggling with like, do I, like when do I become a catechumen to become orthodox? And he was like, Cassidy, you're more orthodox than you want to admit. You should become a catechumen. And I was like, yeah, you're probably right. And so that I, I became a catechumen and kind of worked through that path. And um, yeah, we eventually decided, no, let's keep doing this. Like, um, you know, but there, that was that hard part where it's like to be with him, not, um, 28 at the time. I mean, tw uh, or was I 29? Beginning 29 or 28. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, I'm not old, but like I'm definitely getting older. And, you know, for a woman in Christian communities, generally get married very young and men, um, <laughs> who are my age or a little older, they generally marry people in their mid twenties. And so you hit 30 and it's not like the end of the world, but it definitely limits your options. And so being in this relationship, moving towards this, it, it, it put a hold. If, if it fell apart, it didn't work. It wasn't the right thing. It put a hold on that process of like what it is to like find, find someone. And, uh, I didn't want that to be like a factor and and why I made a decision. <laughs> and I wanted to have like more so like sovereignty in God, but there was definitely some of that factor of like, um, you know, I don't want to be the girl who puts five years into a relationship for it to go nowhere. <laughs> and then the time that you need to heal from that. I'm just, I just don't, I can't afford that anymore. I'm not 20. <laughs> just, you know, um, so that was, um, yeah, that was hard, but yeah. he made it easier in a lot of ways because he was always very understanding and like there was this earnestness and this seriousness that he took things um, that wasn't antagonistic, that wasn't um, ever impatient. Um, and it helped me a lot because I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, she would almost blow up at me for this conversation. For what conversation? This. You were like, are you really <laughs> getting into the shower now? <laughs> I did not want to blow up at you. <laughs> I did say, hey, Jeff is going to be here. <laughs> I was late. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am interested in, in um, there was one particular thing that you said in there, Ferdy, where you, you drew kind of the, the parallel or a little bit of the example from the Adam and Eve and how you felt like, you know, you would be a fake person um, jo going into this relationship with a, with a real person. Was there a point in time that you can think about where you feel like there was actually a shift there for you? Um. Well, I, I remember that pretty clearly in some ways. Like it, the shift was probably already present before me noticing it. But then, you know, the problem is you're gonna hold the brake longer as well because you don't wanna let it go too soon because that would be des devastating as well. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we were just talking about it and she was here in the Netherlands. Yeah, it was when, so we dated for eight months without ever meeting each other because of COVID um the like the restrictions were so that um, neither of us could travel to each other's countries and you know we we schemed about oh maybe we go to a different country <laughs> we meet somewhere else but yeah. it worked out that I could come here and um visit him so on that trip um yeah we're having conversations I don't know yeah, yeah. well yeah and I've just been going to the Orthodox Church for a couple of weeks then. And that was like COVID time, which was a small Greek Orthodox Church. So the whole liturgy was in Greek. And there was like no coffee time or anything. So it was just like you, you come in and you get out. So I would not talk to anybody. I would just be there, not understanding a word they were saying. But the church was just beautiful. And then the first time I came there, like I also got like an email with an invitation in Greek. 
And I just saw like a time in there and I was like, okay, good. I give the time, you know, I know that I'm like, welcome. So let's go. And then like, I would go there, but like, I would be early, early. Like, I'm like, nobody was there yet, except one other person. It was dark, the candles were only burning, no lights otherwise. And there was just the hymns going. But that was like, probably the best thing I could have done because I was just standing there, listening to it, getting like into all the icons around. Well, and there's there's something very different about an Orthodox church versus an evangelical church where it is very participatory. And it's it's not necessarily about understanding exactly what everything is being said, um, although it helps. <laughs> but like there's something about the liturgy and the, the way that they move and the icons that are supposed to draw you into like the sacred space. And so um, it's much easier like in his situation where even if he doesn't know the language to like participate and get something from that than say like a Protestant church. Um, I think it even helped because I could not focus on the words. Well, before that, you know, it's on the Discord, you're talking to people, you're reading about it, you're like listening to podcasts about it. So you have all these like knowledge sort of ways of like getting the or getting Christianity into you in a way and then there that's only gone like you can only do it for like like by taking notice of what's going around you with the music and the icons and the movements so yeah so where I was just going like about like a couple weeks before I think I think a couple months I think it was longer than you think yeah I don't remember that exactly but yeah and then we were like talking here about it and we're talking about you know me and the faith in a way and then it was the next day well no we were talking and I kind of stopped and was like you remember that thing you said to me about orthodoxy how I was more orthodox than I would admit he was like yes (laughs) I already knew what was going (laughs) (laughs) I think you're more Christian than you want to admit and he kind of just like settled with it and thought about it and didn't say anything about it. And then the next day we're sitting in Utrecht having a coffee. And he's like, okay, I think you're right. <laughs> I'm like, is that where the fa- famous photo came from? Where there's like, a, it's a picture of you, Cassidy, sitting at a table, but the big thing was what was going on in the background. <laughs> no, I, 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 there was else, same but, day, but. Same day. <laughs> Patio to patio. <laughs> that lady's face. <laughs> um, yeah, but that was the first time he said, like, admitted, oh, I'm a Christian. And then that was game changer for us because it was like, okay, well, then, like, it became real. Like, it wasn't that it wasn't already real, but it's like, okay, this thing we were hoping for, this thing we were hoping that, uh, we would be moving to but didn't know if it was actually possible that barrier had been removed and it's like okay well let's let's figure out how to do that so um six months later i moved to the netherlands and uh started living here Mm -hmm. and uh yeah three months later we got engaged and um i went back to the u.s planned our wedding came back here and then yeah we got married um in october about a week for uh the first time we talked two years earlier (laughs) so you mentioned uh early on in your relationship cassidy that you obviously had like these these barriers or these things um obviously you you had this you had this checklist where you were like he's a no on that he's a no on that he's a no on that but it, it it seemed like the biggest one was that, you know, that thing that gets trained into um, uh, evangelical Christians of got to, it's got to be the same foundation. It's got to be the same foundation. Now, what I'm hearing is that that was still there, but you guys were able to, to reach a point where there was a place where you came together on that. Um, I'm curious. So I, I heard how that resolved, um, with you and how you you two were able to move forward through that um, and grow into that. How, Cassidy, because again, I've grown up in similar circles as you, how has that journey been and that resolution been from your family side? Because I'm going to make the assumption, Faraday, that from your family side, 
just as you didn't really feel like that was an issue, I would assume that your family probably didn't feel like that was an issue either. No, uh, no. And to, to contrast that, Cassidy, I am sure, just based on my own experience, that there are people in your family who that was a really big hurdle for. So say as much as you feel comfortable saying, but I'm just curious how that dynamic played out from your family's side. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a bit of a tension. Um, and I had, I had dated the people who weren't Christians before, one guy previously. Um, and then I had, you know, had conversations and feelings for people who were like atheist, agnostic, um, sort of things. And so for my family, this became this like pattern where I'm trying to fix people. <laughs> and it, was like, it really wasn't that. Um, Missionary dating. Yes. Well, and I, I wanted to really avoid that because I didn't want that to be like, I thought that was very ingenuous of me to like come into a relationship to try to like manipulate them into being Christian. Like I certainly feel that there's like a call for me where like, I, I did agree that it was like, I don't think I feel morally right about marrying somebody if there isn't that like shared foundation. Um, but like, for me, there was something else of like being willing to say, well, <laughs> really like having grown up evangelical and leaving Protestantism and moving into orthodoxy, it was like, well, I went through a journey myself. So how can I fault somebody for doing the same thing, but coming from the opposite side, I can't. And like, I, I saw this way of like traveling together to move towards that, to get clarity on that um, more than um, some of my family did. So for a while it was sort of like, you know, the conversations happened first at the beginning, particularly with my sisters, <laughs> you know, when I first kind of mentioned it, and I'm like, oh, Cassie, what are you doing? Like, this is stupid. <laughs> And I mean, it was all coming from, I, I recognize that it was all coming from a place of concern, a place of like loving me. And so it was never offensive to me, but it was sort of difficult in like trying to express it. Um, and luckily I didn't get very defensive about it, which was, I think, very helpful. Where it was like, if they brought it up, I would talk about it and I would say my piece, but it wasn't a fight, um, which is sometimes not my mode of being. I can sometimes get very feisty and very argumentative. <laughs> but with him, I think I just had a certain piece about it where it didn't become that. But there was some dinners where we had sit downs and it was, you know, the bit all the biblical things I had been taught, um, you know, <laughs> my whole life growing up. And um, I didn't disagree with all of the things they said, but I think I saw things in just a bigger frame. And so, um, there was a lot of skepticism. And then when he became a Christian, when he like told me that, um, I didn't immediately tell my family because I didn't want it to be like, well, he's a Christian now, see? Like, <laughs> like, I just didn't want it. Like, I, I felt like if I was too upfront about it, they, they wouldn't believe me. <laughs> but then when they did start asking about it and he says, no, he's a Christian, then there became the skepticism of like, well, why didn't you tell us? Is he really a Christian? And so there was, there was first the, um, you know, is this a good thing to be doing? Is this wise? And then when he became a Christian, did he just become a Christian because he wants to marry you? You're a very nice girl, whatever. <laughs> uh, or so they say, I mean, <laughs> I'm still not doing that. <laughs> um, but uh, I think there was still that sort of uncertainty and skepticism until they met him. And I think that changed the game because it's like, I think they could really in some way see the thing that I saw um, by interacting with him. Um, and I think they just saw the ways that he loved me, particularly in um, some of my harder moments. <laughs> and that for them softened this sort of like idea. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was a bit of a struggle. <laughs> well, I took grandma on my side instantly so but I'll... yeah well my grandma so my grandma is not a christian or well i i don't i don't know i don't think she would identify as a christian she she was more involved in new age things i i think she 
has somewhat of an okay view of Jesus, but I, I wouldn't fully know what her position is, but she's much more liberal in um, a lot of different facets and particularly relationships. So because Verdi was kind and smart and funny and loving and caring for me, it didn't, you know, that was easy for him. And, you know, my dad was actually much more um, sort of on board with you than um, I would expect from him. <laughs> He's very protective, but he he got to know Verdi through Zoom calls. Um, we would do Zoom calls with my grandma and him um, kind of on a weekly basis. And so he got some exposure from him there. And so once he met him in person, that I think helped settle some things, at least settled them enough to say, okay, well, I'm not so worried about my daughter flying across an ocean to go, um, <laughs> you know, live near this person. Um, but yeah, so there was, I think there was a, of varying views of skepticism. I think there's probably still extended family who are very skeptical. There are some who are very, very happy with Verdi. They just love him. <laughs> but I think there are some that are sort of skeptical. I think pretty skeptical that um, I'm Orthodox. Mm, that's, they don't, yeah. They don't really say it to me. And that was another fight too, of like Orthodoxy with my family. Um, they have, they have softened now. Um, but yeah, that was like when I told them, oh, I'm going to get uh, chrismated, you know, and invited them to it. That's when the questions really started and sort of that like, wait, what is this? Uh -huh. um, and again, all from the sort of loving place where they don't want me to get involved in something that uh, is not healthy for me. Yeah. But yeah, the hard part was like, but you're you're against this thing that you don't know or understand. Like. They, and they'll admit it, like, we don't know orthodoxy, but <laughs> this is why it's wrong. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. And I try not to be defensive about that either. Um, I think for me, there is a piece about orthodoxy that um, allows me to do that in a way that I haven't felt with other um, expressions of spirituality that I've like found myself in, um, which makes it somewhat easier, but it's still hard because I do, I do, I care very greatly about um, my family and the people that are closest to me. And um, particularly because I think they're wise and I think they have a lot to offer and I think they have a lot of truth in what they say. Um, but I, I tend to, um, although I still kind of lean more towards the conservative end of things, I tend to be more liberal than um, other members of my family. And so that adds um, a bit of wildness that you know, they've got to like get their minds around. <laughs> mm -hmm. How is it for you though? Yeah. What does your family think of Cassidy Faraday? <laughs> no, they're fine with it. But I, mean, how <laughs> <laughs> I like, ah, she's fine. Go, yeah. go yeah. about your business. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, how is it for you to be in that position where, you know, there was skepticism of you? It was not too difficult though. Like it's like it was understandable for the skepticism to be there. And then at the same time, it's like, well, you know, if there are questions, you can just ask. Um, you know, I think I've, I've you kind of know, like things will be revealed eventually. Mm -hmm. And you want to incorporate everybody into your relationship, like especially family and friends. But you also know that you don't have the control over it. It's not like, you know, you can just give them candy and, you know, they're all on board. It's like, well, no, you just got to show what the relation is, relationship is and who you are and then hope they will come on board. And I don't know. I like every time, like I heard, like maybe like a possible skepticism or something. I was like, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's often not even talking about me in a way. So then it's like, you know, it's like I could defend the points they were making, but it was like, oh, that's not even, they're not really talking about me. They're talking about this yeah, sort of very, fictional version. Yeah, this idea of what Faraday was given the facts that they had on a piece of paper, which we all do, right? It's like we jump to these conclusions and um, I don't know, Faraday, I always, I always say Faraday kind of like broke all my categories and rewrote all my narratives where like the stories that I saw the way they ended, the things that had happened in my past. He had this way of like flipping them upside down and like making them whole and showing me like the true, the true story of like the beauty of, of what it could be. And um, 
right? He, he, he just made it easier too, because I would say, oh, my family said this and they're worried about that. And he was like, well, Casty, if they weren't worried about that, I'd be concerned. <laughs> you know, like they, they should be worried, you know, that you met a guy on the internet. Like there's a lot of creeps on the internet. You sh there should be worried, you know, <laughs> about these things. Like that's not an unreasonable thing. And, you know, I, I recognize that too. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but it, I, I think the, the fear of the unknown was the worst part just because like they couldn't meet him. Like they did some Zoom calls, but like, they couldn't meet him in person. They couldn't have dinner with him because we couldn't get to a place to have dinner. Yeah. No, that was probably the, our, one of the hardest things that like the whole COVID situation, like thankful, like probably because of COVID, <laughs> we are together. But at the same time, it was also like this really big struggle when it was like withholding us from each other, like to be able to visit. Yeah, the travel bans, like for anybody who is like separated from a level like a loved one, the travel bans were so much more frustrating than for anybody else. And you're, you're constantly looking at the news thinking, okay, what has changed? What has changed? And you hear, oh, there's supposed to be an announcement coming and it never comes. And then there's an announcement coming and you hope it's going to make things easier, but it's just extending the restrictions. And um, yeah, it's, it, it really, it really made us lose control of um, the path in which we were going and um, I don't know I think I, I think it all sort of played out as it should <laughs> um, gave us the time to like figure out these things and I mean it, we we because of it we um, we had so many deep meaningful conversations that it felt like you know we dated for three months but it felt like we had dated for a year because we we had done all of the you know we had talked about all of the important things and gone through the important things because we weren't distracted by, you know, going out and, you know, the only thing you can do is talk. <laughs> <laughs> There's no phone in your hand, no television watching. Like it's, you know, the only thing you could do is talk, 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 talk. And I still like nowadays, I'm like, well, how did we even do that? <laughs> like you know, hours of talking on a day. It's like, well, what did we even talk about? <laughs> Yeah. We failed it though. Yeah, now like after two minutes of like <laughs> <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> yeah, we got a long we got a long road ahead of us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think we were already old, so yeah. <laughs> shorter to the bit. Yeah, we we're over the hell. <laughs> it's almost bedtime there, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was trying to think if there was anything else. I mean, you were, you were answering every, I didn't have to ask any questions that I had in my mind. You guys were hitting on all of them. So I appreciate well, you. We, we get a lot of these questions. It's like, uh, how did you get me? Uh, the internet? Oh, Tinder? Uh, no. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> well, close enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, how, you know, the question is, how does that work? You know, um, but a lot of people are, more kind of like in awe by it than sort of like off put by it i think it's also like people know it nowadays that people meet through the internet mm -hmm. it's, it's become well it's become more common yeah it's not as uncommon as it was you know 20 30 years ago yeah, yeah. well it's just funny to like bridges of meaning has this i i don't know it has that weird especially the early rendition of it i mean i know there's there's been a lot of cycles and ups and downs with Bridges of Meaning, but that early sort of group that it, it's yeah. something like I've never experienced before, but that, you know, relationships have come out of it, the marriages have come out of it, the babies have come out of it. Like it's wild to me. And it wasn't the mission, right? I was not on there to find a husband. I was on there to pal around on the internet, talk about philosophy, religion, and like, um, you know, meet interesting people i would have no clue why i really clicked that link to join you were you love stories yeah that's probably it like but yeah, i don't know yeah but that 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 sort of relationship has come i don't know there's something kind of beautiful about it and i mean it's certainly not the path for everybody and it shouldn't be the path for everybody but um i'm very grateful for what it led me um it's like 
it's completely uprooted my life and like flipped it around in some of the best ways possible. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He said, for me, it's still the same. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I've been been here all along. <laughs> it's been this way this whole time. What's that meme? Always has been. <laughs> yeah, always has been. <laughs> Although like your, your life is very much the same, but it's totally different. Oh, yeah. Well, that's like some of the things you also notice, right? Like you, you're like from like now in this conversation, at one point I was like, I really have no clue what I would have been really thinking or like in a way about all these things two years ago. Like, would I have been okay? Would it have been like completely different? Like, like it's so difficult to really go back already like two to three years to imagine like what you were like in some ways or how you thought about some things. It's like, oh, yeah. there's quite, quite, quite a difference in there as well. Like a lot of things are still the same, but also like four or five years ago I wasn't sure if I'd even get married like that was that wrestling of like is that even a path that I should take and so you know we we talk about it all the time it's like we met at the right time for it to work if we had met at any other time in our lives we'd not have been together it would not have worked but we met at this like perfect intersection in our lives where uh, it became healthy to be together and a part of each other's lives. And um, because we like accepted that path, it ultimately led to one that, um, you know, hopefully lasts forever. <laughs> Not forever. 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to explain that, Joe? No. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain that one. It's rolling 30. A rolling 30 years we're together. <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's also like what we've been talking about nowadays. Sometimes it's like people talk about like age to get married. Like, you know, you should get be younger when you get married in a way. And sure, there are like some benefits, like being younger married. Uh but it's also like if we look back like it's it's also like you need to be ready for marriage and i didn't get prepared at all for marriage till like probably then the three years ago that it started to become something more salient something more to aim for it's probably already like five years now by the way it's a long, long time ago. whereas i kind of grew up in this place where it was like i was always preparing for marriage but i I should never date or think about boys until I'm 18. And then when I turn 18, anyone I possibly date, like I should be ready to marry them immediately, <laughs> um, you know? And it was just that, that was wild. And then, you know, I almost got married young. And then when that broke down, like I had to reconfigure my whole like world and like my perspective on religion and then kind of once I got to a healthier place with that, it started making me re rethink about the idea of marriage and what that looks like. And um, yeah, and I, I think for me, there's, there's so much talk about like, get married, have kids. It's good for our society. You know, it's going to help the political landscape. <laughs> uh, and it's like, okay, fine. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not minimizing the benefits of marriage and like the beauty of marriage. And um, I think that's a, a good thing to promote. Um, but before we can do that, it's like, well, how do we, how do we get people prepared for marriage and the understanding of what that means for them? Like, I think the focus should be more on, um, you know, the, the, the creating a culture where we can have children who are ready for marriage than marriage in and of itself creating that culture um, I don't think that's how it works yeah why is marriage so beautiful yes and that's for me I think where I really started reframing and like finding the beauty of marriage because for a while marriage to me um, I wanted to be married but there was something sort of um 
there's something about love and romance that felt um, immature to me because growing up, you had all of these girls swooning over rom-coms and Valentine's Day cards and things that felt superficial to me. And so I, I kind of got jaded on the idea of what marriage was and like the beauty of it. But the more that I kind of took the time to gain curiosity about the religious frame and um, what it really meant to be married and, and starting to see marriage as this sort of icon of, of what it is to be, um, well, an icon of God, but then it teaching you also what it means to be more fully human. Um, the story became much more beautiful. And um, I don't know, I'm, I, I'm always sort of sad that that's not more of the topic than just strictly get married, have kids, you have so many benefits. And, you know, here are the negative benefits of, you know, casual sex or what have you, you know. Yeah, one is it kind of more like almost preparing them to let the other way. Like there's also a need to get married, ready to be married. Mm -hmm. Because we are still marrying. Like it's not like over yet, but we are wet. That's over. Yeah. Well, and that's something in the Orthodox Church or priest was telling us they don't actually perform marriages. They just crown them. So in that sense, marriage is happening before you walk down that aisle and walk that sign that contract. It's this idea of two people putting their lives together, becoming one and understanding what that means, um, you know, in a, in a spiritual sense. And so, yes, we've, we've walked down the aisle, we got married, <laughs> but in our minds, it's like, well, we'll continue to marry um, our whole lives. And like, whether we reach that point of oneness or not, like, uh, who knows, but like, yeah. it's certainly a, a goal to aim for aim for and there's probably going to be in times in life we're more one than uh others you know like we're more in sync we're more uh fully one than others but that's part of the journey and that like sort of crucible of what marriage is to kind of purify and make you a better person Oh, oh, and I remembered you did ask what was the qualifications for an Orthodox marriage, and we did not answer that question. But <laughs> um, so to have an Orthodox marriage, at least one partner has to be Orthodox. Mm, I'm Orthodox. And then um, the other partner has to be a baptized Christian. And so he was baptized Lutheran, ident you know, identified as a Christian, we could get married. Um, but he is working to become Orthodox. Well, they're working on me. Yeah, they're working on me. <laughs> I was going to ask if that's effortless, Ferdy. It's quite effortless. Like I have like, well, outside of maybe getting out of bed on a Sunday morning, for example, it's like, you know, I have no issue going there. I enjoy it. I love talking with the, the people we have met so far at the church. Um, you know, I that's for me is like, you know, a nice place to be. And I hope it stays that way for a long, long time. Do they talk to you only in Greek or what language are they speaking? No, we went, uh, eventually we, we moved to another church. Um, like the Greek one was also very useful because it was like next to my parents' house. So that would, would be like, you know, that was like a five minute walk from their place. Uh, but now we found one that does a Dutch liturgy as well. Uh, and it, and it's, like, it's like a lot of new young people coming in now as well. So we have this quite a nice group of people that are like all exploring this together. All, all who know Paul, they're like, uh, uh Jay Dyer, yeah. you, uh, like, so like pe people come Jonathan like the Drew. different ways in. So it's, it's kind of like that nice, like nice mix of like, uh, people you have to explore with, but also already people who have been there for a long time. And it's a Russian tradition. And I was brought into the church in a Russian church. So for me, the melodies are very similar which is very, um, it's very nice. And it, it helps ground me in the liturgy where in the Greek liturgy, I, it was beautiful, but I felt lost because there was nothing to ground me because I, I don't speak Greek um, and I'm, I'm learning Dutch, but um, I'm not fluent in it. So that helps too, where it's like, okay, and remember, understand some of the words and now it's not two foreign languages being, you know, <laughs> spoken to me, but just one. 
Yeah. And so it, it ended up being um, a good place to plant. And yeah, there's so many lovely people there. And um, Yeah. Well, and we have like a nice mix. We have like Greeks, Russians, Coptics, like different traditions coming together as well. Yeah. yeah it's very much sort of like a Dutch Orthodox church, even though that's not quite a thing, but you know, it's that. Soon. Yeah, it's that sort of experience. You'll make it a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Colonized. <laughs> but it, I think it reflects much more of like the, the Dutch culture and the the diversity that is there than um, particularly like some of these more uh, ethnically focused communities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's been a good fit for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like it's only 40 minutes drive, so it's not too far. Like at the same time, I kind of wish like we had a church like in the hometown. Yeah. Because you sort of notice like the little things, like you know, either going by on a Wednesday evening because you know somebody needs some help or something. Mm-hmm. Like, like it's then it's like suddenly like 40 minutes drive, like after work, that's suddenly a, a long, long time. Because then yeah. you would be there at nine o'clock in the evening and then you would get home possibly 11. So yeah. Like those are like the little things or like, you know, you you go uh, like to town on a Friday and be like, oh, like you want to come over? Like we have some coffee. And it's hard because there's a lot of, because of, I mean, there's a lot of Orthodox churches in the Netherlands, surprisingly, uh, more than I thought there would be. But because it's, you know, there's not as, it's not as prominent as other denominations, you have a lot of commuters. So even if we did live in, the area that the church was in yeah there's still a lot of people who they live all over the place and so luckily we're kind of the center of the country so um it's like not crazy far from too many people but it, it has its struggles and i think for us um just recognizing the importance of community and that like religious participation um it makes it sort of difficult but we manage mm-hmm. I was going to ask you guys how far you live from Job. We're like 30 minutes. Yeah, 40, 40 30, minutes. 30, 40 minutes, yeah. About the same, okay. Yeah. yeah no, it's, that's always fun. We've, we've had lunch a couple times with Job. And, um, I mean, we met a lot of the Dutch youth now. Um, we, they, a lot of them went to the German festival. Mm-hmm. So getting to meet them in person. And we had a big group come with us to the church. Um, Joe, Peter, Dennis, um, Boss, and Sarah, but they go to the church. Yeah, but Probably to church as well. That was kind of fun to kind of, and a lot of them. I think for all of them, it was their first time being in an Orthodox service. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of fun. Um, but yeah, it's kind of lovely. I think for me. Um, I'm very grateful for the international aspects of Bridges of Meaning in these online communities where you can connect with people you'd never be able to before. Um, but there's also a real downside to that and the loss of human connection and like grounding things in reality. And so having so many Dutchies who have been a part of the community who we can meet in person and um, hopefully establish more of like a you know, pattern of, of meeting with them and living life with them. Um, I'm really excited for that kind of opportunity. And you guys got married, uh, Cassidy, at your church that you were going to in Arizona, right? Yeah. And there were some people who you had met on the Discord that uh, were able to come to that wedding. Um, yeah. well, it was the, it was the uh, perfect uh, sample size of... Uh, Discordians because yeah. we, we had a, realized that a little bit later. We had like yes, a perfect we had a, combination. Yeah, we had a Catholic, we had a Protestant, we had a Jewish person, an atheist, and thus Eastern Orthodox. So <laughs> <laughs> quite the diversity. Yeah, because you guys had Joey, you had uh Jacob, Andrea came all the way down with her family from Canada, right? Mm-hmm. And then Brian. Um, Brian, um, who ran the Bible study server, mm-hmm. came too. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that was a fun group. We had a few drinks before the evening as well. That could have gone till like early morning if we didn't stop it. But, uh, 
Yeah, but we had to get married in the morning. So <laughs> you got it. Well, it's funny. I was telling my the the wedding coordinator who like ran the venue. She was kind of asking our story, and I was like, "Yeah, there's gonna be some people at the wedding we've never met in person." And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> "She was just like, that's wild." Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but it was it was fun. Yeah, it was cool to see that and it all. I mean, it was just nice to have them there too because it. Uh, I don't know. It just represented the thing that we came from and like i got to go to shelly and nathan's wedding mm-hmm. as the only discord person who, who went and who's able to go and um that was just sort of special like to see that and i got to help i got to be with shelly the whole day and like help her you know get ready and there's something kind of uh, there's just something so beautiful about seeing that manifest in reality mm-hmm. it, like, because what's happening online is real but like you lose sight of it if you can't find a way to ground it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, that can be really like disorienting or overwhelming. And, and yeah, just finding a ways to ground that. And, you know, I've been lucky enough to be able to ground that outside of the discord, like take what I've learned from the discord and have that manifest in my life with other people. But um, yeah, having it, uh, having it, happen with people that I met online and make like marrying those two worlds. That's there, there's nothing like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it adds another level 30. Sorry. You were going to say something. Yeah. Well, it was also like with our families, right? They never met. No. <laughs> so then it's like, like, you know, that's the first time I really got to meet and you never, you never like you, you assume it will be fine, you know, at worst, it will probably like be a little bit offhanded to each other, but you know, it will be decent enough. But that just like went great as yeah, well. Well, and his nephew came, he's five, six, um, and he only speaks Dutch. And my nieces, so I you know, introduce them to my nieces, and like, well, huh, who knows what's gonna happen? But just like kids, they have their own language, they just played together and had the most fun and they still talk about each other where it's like, oh, I, you know, I miss Penny. I miss Colby, you know, where's Mason? Like, that was just fun to see. Yeah. Um, it's, I think especially for kids because they just have such a, like a, an innocence about them and the way that they connect and the way that they like aim to help each other and like find joy in the world. I don't know. <laughs> We see that a bit more often here in Europe because under some holidays you have all the families from all countries going to the beaches and then you have all the ch- children playing there in the sand and into, into the waters and they will find each other and they won't speak in words of the same language but somehow they can communicate perfectly and all the parents are looking at them and are like well I can't talk to you so you know <laughs> you say it your fan I'm saying it my fan we're good. <laughs> No. Yeah. No, that was a good day. Yeah. Yeah, I was just um I was thinking about the the night before uh where you guys were talking about how you got to meet up with some of the, the folks from the Discord that you had never met in person before. And yeah, those I, from personal experience, that that first meeting can go on for a long time if you don't have any limits uh, the next day, because <laughs> that's what happened when we did the the fishing trip in uh, mm-hmm. Arkansas, um, where it was me, Sam, Jacob, and um, Charlie, and I was running late, and I got there at midnight. I got to the campsite, and we we stayed up talking until six in the morning. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that that would not have been conducive if someone in that party had to get married <laughs> that, that next day. I, I would have been very responsible. I would never stay up that late <laughs> having conversations with people. Right. <laughs> your cutoff time. Your cutoff time is nine in the morning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, his friends have the joke that Faraday is the guy that turns out the light. He's always the last person at to leave the party so he's the one who turns out the light so it's just very difficult to get out of conversations and then be like okay i'm out well i have that same uh issue too where i you know 
I, I just love people. And so like, I can just go and talk and it's hard for me to leave a conversation. Even with Jeff last time, we probably talked two hours on the record, but we also had like yeah. at least two hours afterwards. You, you, <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing. You turn off the recording and the best things happen when the camera's not off. Like the, the yeah, the most memorable things happen when everything when the camera stops, which is probably the beauty of it. I, it's probably a good thing. <laughs> um, but like we, so Andrea with the bangs, she came to Europe, what was it? A month and a half? Yeah, before, two, two months before or so. It felt like two weeks, but <laughs> like a month and a half before we got married and we spent a weekend with her and her, uh, yeah, we were like two, three days with her and her husband showing them around the Netherlands. And it was like another one of those moments. And it was right before the German festival happened. So it was one of those moments where you kind of get this taste of the thing, of the seeds that had been planted for years. Mm -hmm. Like the taste of like what it was and like sitting and having a meal and like sharing little moments and, and sharing um, like cities. And then, you know, you go and move into the German festival and like what happened at the event um like there was so much beauty to it like there was I, I you know I couldn't see it going better and it's just like that spark like oh yeah <laughs> that's what we do that's what we work towards that we move towards and then having that again at our wedding just three different sort of modes of uh like grounding the thing that uh started in this other world that is the internet <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like seeping out I don't know yeah a lot of world, worlds came together in some ways on like a wedding day that have never collided before for, for most of them well and for me too because it's like I had some of like Protestant people I had some people from like my restaurant life I had discord people I had you know people I knew from filmmaking and so it's all of these weird worlds like colliding in on each other and <laughs> yeah it's sort of like it's bizarre <laughs> well it's especially bizarre because nobody was fighting the whole time at least that I noticed <laughs> there was some, there was some fighting <laughs> I learned about afterwards there was some fighting <laughs> it's subtle hidden yeah. <laughs> yeah but i don't know there yeah there was a lot of joy for it though even even in the the midst of all the little quirky things that happen and you know some people's uh hurt feelings if you will like there's still some joy of like well that's you yeah i don't know i just get some joy of the world's colliding and um things being unearthed and seeds being planted well i mean i guess i don't i don't have any other questions um <laughs> uh, i don't know if there's anything else that you guys want to share or you know Mr. roger i guess right now yeah <laughs> trying to stay silent right? right right now i would have just sat there and stared at you if i was doing <laughs> uh, <Mr>. rogers <laughs> uh. Uh, no, I mean, I think that's it. I mean, there's a million little details you you can't even share, but I mean, that's the that's the spark notes. <laughs> well, there's so many little stories as well that you know you can't even all conjure anymore. Like it's like this, like this, the the conversations and the topics that has been on the Discord, right? That help you form in a way. And that allows us to talk about topics that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to talk about yet, or very immaturely. But then also maturing it together. It's like, you know, those those are like crucial things which happened over like all those years, all those days, all those little moments with people, uh, which in some ways, like sometimes the smallest moments are the biggest. So. You know, it's it's difficult to convey the story if you don't live the story yourself. Yeah, like it's impossible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry about it. Well, mystery caller. My father. Welcome to the show. 
His ears <laughs> are like, what are you telling about me on the internet? <laughs> You can yeah. dial him in if you want to. Yeah. Like Jeff probably has some questions for you now. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to get his opinion on all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, that made me think of one more question and then we can we can stop here because I know it's getting a little bit later for you guys and you still need to eat. Um, uh, so can you, could you even imagine, because let me see, how can I phrase this question? So you guys have something that is very uncommon for most people on the discord, right? Like there's, I'm sure, I don't know what the, what the mix is, but you know, there's a, there's a certain percentage of people in the discord who are already married. There's a certain percentage of people in the discord who are single. Um, most of the people that I know on the discord that are married are not married to someone that they met on the discord, right? They're, the marriage happened before discord, before, you know, their interests led them to the discord and these, you know, people that they met there who they can talk about things where it's just like, I don't know how to talk to other people about this kind of stuff. And they, they were able to find each other. Like, can you imagine being married to someone who doesn't know about all of that stuff? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I certainly can imagine. I, I mean, I, I dated um, a few people like after I had found the discord, but before I, you know, found Faraday. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not that they didn't like talking about certain topics, but yeah, there were certain parts where like, yeah, they didn't like, they got annoyed about the way I want to talk about things or like how curious I was and like, not in a terrible way, but it was just like, um, yeah. And I mean, I, my previous fiance, the one I almost married, um, yeah, he, like, that was sort of right when I started kind of getting really interested in topics that discord people would like to talk about. And like, it, there was just a disconnect there and it's not impossible, but like for myself, it was like realizing, oh, I do need someone who has that interest, that curiosity, who wants to like turn these questions around. And, um, I don't know. I think for some people, like, oh, my friend, Christian, do you remember Christian? We had a conversation uh -huh. with him. He yep. got married to um, uh, uh, a woman. It was like, not even a year ago, but he was talking to me about her. He's like, we, she doesn't like to talk about those things. Like, it's probably good for you that she doesn't <laughs> like to talk about those things. You gotta yep. like bring you down. Um, so I think for some people, it can be a real benefit that they don't mm -hmm. have someone like wanting to be interested in these topics. And I, I think of someone like Luke Thompson, it seems like his wife is sort of grounded in a different interest. And so I, I think that can really help him in, in some ways, but mm -hmm. I'm grateful to have that and not feel like that part of my life is cut off or something mysterious that he can't understand. Um, I don't know what you think about it. I could easily date somebody else. No problem. <laughs> So romantic. <laughs> uh, I, th I think one of the things, like it's, it's not so much the, the Discord itself, like it's uh, the Discord was of course like a place yeah. that allowed a lot of the growth to come forth. But I think it's more the spirit of the Discord. But I've, know, I've seen that spirit in many other places before as well, especially when traveling. Like you would sit in the evening, you would sit down with each other, you had a beer, and you would just be talking to like sometimes even the early hours of the morning and it's it, it's uh, like so, there's something about the people you travel with like first of all you're going in sh and you're shedding the family uh you're shedding the the friends you have in a way um like you're leaving them behind and you're always going to behave in a certain way with your friends and family and it's nearly impossible to destroy that sort of way of manners you have but then you start traveling and suddenly that's gone because you don't you don't get in that position but that's also the other person has the same thing so suddenly you're both in this whole new place without all these ways of having to behave or like it's it's not even like you have to behave but you're you're, you're sort of forced into it because you're used to it or the things that you imagine people expect you to behave mm -hmm. yeah. 
like the uh, yeah the expectations. Yeah, so parts of the mask is, is being shed automatically when traveling, and mm -hmm. especially traveling for like a little bit longer at one spot, you get to meet people, and then both are like less well, like less personas with a mask on and become mm -hmm. more like real people that are like not really sure how their face look like. Well, there are. Discord is doing the same, mm -hmm. or at least, at least from what I remember, what we had, like it used to do that. It's like allowing people to express themselves more honestly and inquiring in themselves more honestly, and then having people to receive that yeah. with like and kindness, but also, you know, and uh, seriousness that they would also question you or like mm -hmm. push back. or show themselves at least. And I think, you know, as long as you can find that in the person you, you, you know, you will spend the rest of your life with, you know, that's just a blessing. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> what? I wanted to make a comment. I will we'll hold my joke there. <laughs> no, I want to hear All it. All the viewers are going to be on the edge of their seats. I just wanted to, you know, to advise them to be a bit more careful than I was. <laughs> <laughs> be careful on the Discord. You might end up with someone. Yeah, no, it's a real, uh, real issue. <laughs> Very inconvenient. Yeah. I think as long as you find somebody with that spirit, you will get, you get far. And like, you know, the pe the person you, you're with or around, like friends, family, whatever, like they don't have to have all the facets anyway. Yeah. Like that's a nice thing. Like I know with some friends, I would just drink beer and we talk like, you know, fun stuff. Yeah. And then with others, you know, we would have conversations about, I don't know what, like, you know, and it's fine. There are all these little pockets with their own little things. Yeah. I think that our like mutual curiosity makes it easy for us because we don't always enjoy the same topics or find the same things interesting yet like and honestly our content besides Paul doesn't overlap that much um you know in in the grander scheme of things but there's that curiosity that I think keeps us moving towards that and so there's that question of like oh why do you find that interesting and that back and forth um, is super helpful for us but I also think there are a lot of people who are built very differently. Like I look at my younger sister, I don't think she cares much about like theology and the religious questions, but she found a person that matches her that, you know, they, they work well together um, in that, in their participation. And so like that curiosity that I find so fulfilling that Fairy has, um, she probably doesn't need that as much in like her partner. Um, and so it's not like a, a one size fits all sort of thing. I think there's a lot of people who probably, if they, you know, got in a discord relationship, it would be a nightmare. <laughs> you have to, a key element is you have to have Sherry as your matchmaker. Don't do it without Sherry's yeah, if help. Sherry doesn't approve. Like it's a no go. Yeah. <laughs> she, well, she did pair up Shelly and Nathan. Mm -hmm. And then she gave us the blessing. She didn't have to do much matching. So this whole relationship is fake for just being like tuned for it. Fake for being tuned for it. Yeah. What do you mean? Like when I'm just getting manipulated by Sherry. By Sherry, yeah. <laughs> well, Sherry did say she would tell me all the time. Barry's a Christian. He just doesn't want to admit it. He, <laughs> not he doesn't know it yet. And I'm like, so, <laughs> I don't think you're right, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> so those were really at that point at that point where you told Faraday that, that was just really Sherry's words coming oh out of God. Cassidy's Sherry. mouth. <laughs> well, Luke would also say those things often. Yeah, Luke said it to you. Yeah, he's a Christian. Well, not just about me, but just in general. People yeah. are like, a lot of people are more Christian than, you know, or like a lot of people are like Christians, even though they don't know him. And a lot of people who say they, were, they are Christians, you might discuss that they might be not, but. Things are more complicated. I tried to, uh, I tried to kind of be like accepting and like understanding of like the labels in which people put on themselves. Because it's so irritating to say, you're not really this when people say, well, 
It's like, I really get why people get annoyed with that, particularly atheists. I really get why they get annoyed when they're like, you're not really an atheist. You're a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you get defensive about that, you know, you know that you don't have like a good place where you are yet. Well, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's a spiritually healthy response. I'm just saying I get it. <laughs> like if somebody would say to me, like, well, you're definitely not Christian. I'm like, well, and I could probably see why you think that. Yeah. <laughs> behaviors that are like, you know, I should probably work on. So. Yeah. That, that way about you, Faraday, of, well, you know, I could probably see why you think that, or I understand why, you know, that, I think that, from what I heard earlier in the story, is a big part of why you won over Cassidy's family, because it's just like, yeah, you're probably, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right to be worried <laughs> about these <laughs> things, or I can see why you would think these things. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. For somebody to hear, you know, their biggest concerns explained back to them of, yeah, it's it's reasonable. I get it. You know, uh, tell me, tell me more. That's the easiest way to disarm someone. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the, often the more people talk, the, the worse their arguments get. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. He's not. He doesn't do that to like disarm right. people in a manipulative way of like, right. Oh, you really see what you mean by that like yeah, yeah. no yeah he's, like, just, oh, being, he's just being him he's just being himself but it yeah. also happens to disarm people right it's yeah. not an intentional okay let me see how i can get this person to put down their weapons it's just more of no i'm just going to be this way and oh everyone around me is putting down their weapons okay cool <laughs> <laughs> he no, that would be boring it's like fight guys <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, that was my last question. That was really good. Thank you both so much for entertaining my uh, curiosity. Hopefully I'm not the only person out there that was curious about all of this. So if not, you know, uh, somebody will enjoy this conversation. Not entertained. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's always fun for us to like recap those things because it's sometimes quite difficult to really recollect everything so it's, it's like, fun, but it's also very stressful me i'm kind of a private person particularly when it comes to like my personal life and my romantic entanglements mm -hmm. <laughs> um but there's something i don't know there's only this, one one of those now and hopefully yes. that's all at least for the next 30 years yeah well and I'm I, rolling had, 30. I had too many <laughs> in my past anyway to remember that so you know <laughs> talk about that well but we then, oh sorry go ahead there's something kind of beautiful about like owning it and like I think for me seeing how my past relationships and my past you know whatever you want to call them entanglements things that you know didn't work out or the things that I hoped that would work but didn't work the things that I thought were supposed to be and weren't they all taught me something very beautiful and they you know meeting Faraday like it made sense of everything that came before and so i'm so grateful for it now that it's like easier to talk about and i'm more willing to like share it <laughs> but it's yeah there's still sort of a weirdness sort of like <laughs> sharing my you know personal life on the internet it's weird <laughs> well we are recording this but we don't have to share it if you don't no, no, I'm, I'm happy to share it I, I went into it knowing it was going to be public so I've already talked about it in pieces here and there. So now, now it's the full, the full dish. All right, I got the exclusive. I feel so, so happy. We have to. <laughs> it's Randos United, you know. That's right. You, you named it. I stole it. I may have named it, but you made it. So I, <laughs> you deserve some credit. Like it caught on because of you. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how much longer this channel. Yeah. stays alive <laughs> has it been slowing down yeah i mean there hasn't been a lot of content um one of the things that jacob and i have talked about is using this for his project his his whole vision of a 24 by 7 tbn type youtube channel that where people can live live broadcast their particular shows or whatever content that they have and in the meantime we can play like back catalog of videos from various channels that are a part of this hub and i have no idea how to make all of those things happen but um jacob is working with people like gavin and others behind the scenes to see if uh, you know we can figure out how to do that so 
whatever happens with the channel. I'm just kind of floating in the stream. <laughs> well, I'm taking a page from Faraday's playbook. Well, a lot, a lot of the BOM fathers have basically moved on in a way. So, like a lot of the old timers were also the ones that like probably kept coming for like making new Phoebe's together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that suddenly like you know stops. I can see like why it slows down quickly. Yeah, there there is um, just recently because Paul posted another link on one of his most recent videos. There's a new influx of people who have started hitting BOM. So if I had more time, <clears throat> you know, I'd be interested in getting to know those people and you know pulling them into conversations and if they're willing to come on and share their stories because I'm always interested in you know new stories and where people find themselves and what it is that brought them here and what kind of things they're struggling with and you know what they're looking for those kind of things are always interesting to me well I do think those kind of conversations that like person to go to to have that initial introduction conversation makes it so much easier to engage um with others and like keep coming back to the discord because mm -hmm. like um, I, I think it was easier when you had all the old randos and we got so excited about, oh, we saw it, like, because I saw your video and I saw Joe and I saw, mm -hmm. you know, Julian and all these people, <laughs> conversations. And so you see them, and like, oh, and you get to, like, have these conversations. But you've lost some of that. Um, it's, it's funny. I remember when I first started coming to the Discord, I would go into a room sometimes and people would be like, are you the Cassidy? And I'm like, no, <laughs> like, please, this is so weird. And then the other day I posted um, something about like a live stream to promote the live events. I was doing something with Catherine and somebody responded, excuse me, who are you? <laughs> uh, that's, that's better. Those are the responses we actually yeah. want. <laughs> my ego, but also made me comfortable all at the same time. But th there's something about that familiarity of like knowing you know, knowing the pool of people that um, have come before that's missing a little bit. Mm -hmm. So having those introductions, I think is super helpful because it's not like I have to go into a room full of strangers. It's like, well, I've talked to Jeff yes. or I've talked to you know, Clarity or whoever and they're there. Oh, I want to talk to them. I mean, that's why we talked. I went in because I want to talk to Ginger Bill. Yeah. And then here we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So happy. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it really is a helpful dynamic for people to, you know, there, there's all this talk. I, I don't know if you guys have been paying much attention about how do you onboard into like, I probably shouldn't say this. I'll probably make a lot of enemies. So that's what I'm known for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 I'm not upset with anyone for this. There's just like a certain cringe factor to the this little corner term for me. I don't know why. It, it might just be me. I just, I don't like that. For some reason, I don't like that term. I don't get it. Uh, I, I don't get why I don't like the term. It's not that I don't get the term. I understand it. And I, I use it too, but there's just part of me that's like, eh, I feel weird. Um, but there's been, you know, talk about how, how do people get onboarded into this and, um, to a certain extent, what I'm about to say, it won't help with that at all. But one, one of the avenues that I think did help with people connecting with each other is exactly the dynamic that we just talked about is, oh, I watched someone have a conversation with Paul and now that person is on the Discord and I can actually have a conversation with that person. Um, I saw a video, I, I already, already feel like I know this person to a certain extent. So I feel more comfortable actually going up to them and talking to them now versus, <clears throat> like if you think about Cassie, uh, much of the different like church environments that we've been into, like the Bible studies or singles groups or things like that, it's just like you walk into a room and the only thing that some of the people, a certain percentage of those people have in common is, oh, we've watched the same person talk on stage or play music on stage, but we've never interacted with each other, right? Or sometimes if you're lucky, there's a, per a person who is in that particular social setting who you have actually seen on a Sunday morning go up there and maybe tell their story or have a conversation with someone or maybe there was something about them that was brought into the service where you you knew a little bit more about them so you felt a little bit more comfortable there might have been something that you saw or you heard them say on that platform that made you be like oh that might be a connecting point or that's something that I'm curious about I want to go learn more or ask them what they think about this you know and 
without that then and that's what i feel like you know these these recorded conversations allow people who otherwise wouldn't feel like they would have a point of entry actually might have one when they see somebody talking and they're like oh now i know a part of that person's story i can either if i'm lucky get to talk to that person or i can talk to other people who have who watched that conversation and I can say, here's what I picked out of that conversation. You know, what does everybody else think about this? And that's, that's at least an opportunity, you know, for people to, to engage where otherwise they might just get on there and feel like, oh, I don't feel like I have any connection points with anyone here. Um, I don't know what to do, <laughs> you know? Well, there was like this network of people where it's like, you know, not, not everybody who would talk or say a conversation hit your sort of conversation bubble or your niche or whatever, but there'd be enough people where somebody would say something that would connect. And there's there something was, that got my attention somewhere yeah. in that network. Yeah. There was this like dance that was happening of all of these different people who had, as Paul calls them, their little hobby horses things <laughs> right. that and found this like crossover between them and this like back and forth and, I mean, I can make friends anywhere. So for me, it's hard to say, well, what made it easier for me to kind of like go and talk to strangers on the internet? Well, I talk to strangers <laughs> every day. <laughs> um, but like there was something about, because that Job actually gave me the link to the Discord. And um, at first I kind of was like, all these text channels, I just wasn't about it. But one day I just jumped into a voice chat and just listened. And there was amazing conversation happening and the spirit that um, was so hard to come by, um, particularly when you're talking about sort of big questions, issues or whatever. And it was like, that was intoxicating. And then the way in which, um, you know, I jump in again and then there's this conversation happening where someone's talking about things that are happening in their life, distress, whatever. And like the way that people came around that and like harness that as like, what is happening? This is on the internet. <laughs> I, I, I can't say I know exactly what's going on in the discord right now because I've purposely sort of been stepping away from it to try mm -hmm. to get clarity. And with some of the work that I do with trying to make opportunities where people can come and meet in person, it, it, it's sort of healthy for me to get a little bit of space from it. Um, but I, I just would love to continue seeing Bridges of Meaning being that place where you have surprisingly intriguing conversation that sparks your curiosity, that moves you towards something that doesn't make you pick up your weapons, but kind of gets your maps out and, and rearranges the way that we look at the journey. And, mm -hmm. and we eventually find people to walk along with us in that journey. And um, I don't know. I, I think whatever happens with Bridges of Meaning and the, this little corner, there's enough seeds being planted that have grown into something beautiful, that have created fruit, that have started little gardens that um, I'm not worried about it. Um, and so, you know, I wish people luck with their projects and, and what happens. And um, I think I, I think good has already come from it. Definitely more good than harm. Do you got any final words before we shut it down? No, not really. I think uh, a lot has been said. Like, in, you know, I, I haven't been on the Discord for a long time, so I don't really have like much to say about that. You know, I just hope like there's still people like sometimes drunks sitting in on a video chat, you know, together. Like, what more do you need? You know, that's the starting point for every sort of relationship that can build up. Uh, no, nothing to add. All right. I think that's a good place to end it. Thank you guys for agreeing to this and thanks for whoever's watching. Hope you enjoyed.